The Togoland Campaign 9 August 1914, was a French and British invasion of the German colony of Togoland in West Africa, which began the West African Campaign of the First World War. German colonial forces withdrew from the capital Lomé and the coastal province, to fight delaying actions on the route north to Kamina, where the Kamina Funk Station, wireless transmitter, linked the government in Berlin to Togoland, the Atlantic and South America. The main British and French force from the neighbouring colonies of Gold Coast and Dahomey, advanced from the coast up the road and railway, as smaller forces converged on Kamina from the north. The German defenders were able to delay the invaders for several days at the battles of Agbeluvho and Chra but surrendered the colony on 26 August 1914. In 1916, Togoland was partitioned by the victors and in July 1922, British Togoland and French Togoland were established as League of Nations mandates. Topic. Background Topic. Togoland, 1914 The German Empire had established a protectorate over Togoland in 1884, which was slightly larger than Ireland and had a population of about one million people in 1914. A mountain range with heights of over 3,000 feet 910 meters ran southeast to northwest and restricted traffic between the coast and hinterland. South of the high ground the ground rises from coastal marshes and lagoons to a plateau about 200 to 300 feet 61 to 91 meters high, covered in forest, high grass and scrub, where farmers had cleared the forest for palm oil cultivation. The climate was tropical, with more rainfall in the interior and a dry season in August. Half of the border with Gold Coast ran along the Volta River and a tributary but in the south, the border for 80 miles 130 kilometers was beyond the east bank. The Germans had made the southern region one of the most developed colonies in Africa, having built three-meter gauge railway lines and several roads from Lomé the capital and main city. There was no port and ships had to lie off Lomé and transfer freight via surf boat. One line ran along the coast from Aneko to Lomé, one ran from Lomé to Atakpam and one from Lomé to Palami. Roads had been built from Lomé to Atakpam and Sokod, Palami to Keet Krachi and from Keet Krachi to Sansame Mangu. In 1914, the roads were reported to be fit for motor vehicles. German military forces in Togoland were exiguous. There were no German army units in Togoland, only 693 Politseitruppen, paramilitary police, under the command of Captain Georg Fahler and about 300 colonists with military training. The colony was adjacent to Allied territory, with French Dahomey on its northern and eastern borders and the British Gold Coast to the west. Lomé and the wireless station at Kamina about 62 miles 100 kilometers inland, which was connected to the coast by road and rail, were the only places of military significance. Kamina was near the town of Atakpam and had been completed in June 1914. The transmitter was a relay station for communication between Germany, the overseas colonies, the Imperial German Navy and South America. The Admiralty wished to prevent the station from being used to coordinate attacks on shipping in the Atlantic. At the outbreak of war the governor of Togoland, Duke Adolf Friedrich of Mecklenburg was in Germany and his deputy, Major Hans Major Georg von Doring was the acting governor. <laughs> <laughs> Topic. 
Topic: <laughs> Gold Coast, 1914. Sir Hugh Clifford, the Governor of the Gold Coast, Lieutenant General Charles McPherson Doble, Commander of the West African Frontier Force and Lieutenant Colonel R. A. de B. Rose, Commander of the Gold Coast Regiment were absent during July 1914. W. C. F. Robertson was the acting governor and Captain Frederick Bryant was acting Commandant of the Gold Coast Regiment. The Gold Coast Regiment had one pioneer company, seven infantry companies with a machine gun each, and a battery of four QF 2.95-inch mountain guns, amounting to 1,595 men including 124 carriers and about 330 reservists. There were four volunteer corps with about 900 men and 1,200 police and customs officers. The defense scheme for the Gold Coast 1913 provided for war against the French in neighboring Ivory Coast and the Germans in Togoland. In the event of war with Germany, the colony was to be defended along Lake Volta and the northeastern frontier against the possibility of a raid, which was the most that the Germans in Togoland were thought capable of. The plan also provided for an offensive across the lake into the north of Togoland before making a thrust south to the more populated portion of the colony. On 29 July, a colonial office telegram arrived at Accra, ordering the adoption of the precautionary stage of the defense scheme and Robertson forwarded the information to Bryant the next day. Bryant dispensed with the scheme, which had not been revised after the wireless station at Kamina was built and by 31 July, had mobilized the Gold Coast Regiment along the southern, rather than the northern border with Togoland. In London on 3 August, Doble proposed an advance if war was declared, along the coast road from Ada to Kita and thence to Lome, which was fewer than 2 miles .2 kilometers from the border. Bryant had reached the same conclusion as Doble and had already organized small expeditionary columns at Krachi and Ada and assembled the main force at Kumasi, ready to move in either direction. Topic. Prelude Topic. Anglo-French offensive preparations On 5 August 1914, a day after Britain declared war on Germany, the Allies cut the German sea cables between Monrovia and Tenerife, leaving the radio station at Camina the only connection between the colony and Germany. The same day the acting governor of Togoland, Doring sent a telegram to Robertson proposing neutrality, in accordance with Articles X and XI of the Congo Act, which stated that colonies in the Congo Basin were to remain neutral in the event of a conflict in Europe. Doring also appealed for neutrality because of the economic interdependence of the West African colonies and their common interest in dominating local populations. On 6 August, the Cabinet in London refused the offer of neutrality and Bryant on his own initiative, after hearing that the French in Dahomey wished to cooperate, sent Captain Barker and the District Commissioner of Kedah to Doring, with a demand the surrender of the colony and gave 24 hours to reply. The next morning the British intercepted a wireless message from Doring that he was withdrawing from the coast to Kamina and that Lome would be surrendered if attacked. A similar proposal for neutrality from Doring had been received by the governor of Dahomey, who took it for a declaration of war and ordered an invasion. 
A French contingency plan to seize Lomé and the coast had been drafted in ignorance of the wireless station at Camina, only 37 miles 60 kilometers from the Dahomey border. Topic. Invasion Topic. Capture of Lomé Late on 6 August, French police occupied customs posts near Athene and next day Major Marat, the commander of French military forces in Dahomey, ordered the capture of Agbanek and Anejo. Agbanek was occupied late on 7 August, the Mano River was crossed and a column under Captain Marchand took Anejo early on 8 August, both moves were unopposed and local civilians helped to see off the Germans, by burning down the government house at Seba. The approximately 460 colonists and Askaris retreated inland, impressing civilians and calling up reservists as they moved north. Repairs began on the Anejo Lome Railway and the French advanced to Porto Seguro and Togo before stopping the advance, once it was clear that Lome had been surrendered to British forces. The British invasion began late on 7 August, the British emissaries returned to Lomé by Lorry, to find that the Germans had left for Kamina and given Herr Klausnitzer discretion to surrender the colony up to Chra, 75 miles 120 km inland, to prevent a naval bombardment of Lomé. On 8 August, the emissaries took command of 14 British soldiers and police from Aflau. A telegraph operator arrived by bicycle and repaired the line to Kita and Accra. The British flag was raised, and on 9 August, parties of troops arrived having marched 50 miles 80 km in exhausting heat. Over the border, Bryant had arranged to move the main force by sea and embarked on the Ellily on 10 August. Three other companies had been ordered to Krachi, to begin a land advance to Kamina. The Ellily arrived off Lomé on 12 August and the force disembarked through the surf. Arrangements were made with the French, for a converging advance towards attack Pam by the British and the French from Anejo, a French column under Marat from T. Chetty in the north and the British column at Crachy under Captain Elgy. Small British forces on the northern border, were put under the command of Marat and ordered to move south, as approximately 560 French cavalry were ordered across the northern border from Senegal and Niger, towards Sansane Mangu from 13 to 15 August. The British force at Lomé comprised 558 soldiers, 2,084 carriers, police and volunteers, who were preparing to advance inland, when Bryant received news of a German foray to Togblakov. <laughs> advance to Kamina The Battle of Buffalo was a skirmish between French and German troops in northeast Togoland on 13 August. French forces had crossed the border between French Dahomey and Togoland on 8–9 August. The French were engaged by German troops in the districts of Sansane Mangu and Skode Buffalo. The French company retreated, after facing greater resistance than expected. After the capture of Lomé on the coast, Bryant was promoted to lieutenant colonel, made commander of all Allied forces in the operation and landed at Lomé on 12 August, with the main British force of 558 soldiers, 2,084 carriers, police and volunteers. As preparations began to advance northwards to Kamina, Bryant heard that a German party had travelled south by train the day before. 
The party had destroyed a small wireless transmitter and railway bridge at Togblakov, about 10 miles 16 kilometers to the north. Bryant detached half an infantry company on 12 August and sent another one and a half companies forward the next day, to prevent further attacks. By the evening, I Company had reached Sevi. Scouts reported that the country south of Agbeluvho was clear of German troops and the main force had reached Togblakov. At 10 p.m., I. Company began to advance up the road to Agbeluvho. The relatively harsh terrain of bushland and swamp impeded the Allied push to Kamina, by keeping the invaders on the railway and the road, which had fallen into disrepair and was impassable by wheeled vehicles. Communication between the parties was difficult, because of the intervening high grass and thick scrub. The main force moved on from Togblakov at 6 a.m. on 15 August and at 8.30 a.m., local civilians told Bryant that a train full of Germans had steamed into Sevi that morning and shot up the station. In the afternoon the British advanced guard met German troops near the Lily River, who blew the bridge and dug in on a ridge on the far side. The demolitions and the delaying action, held up the advance until 4.30 p.m. and the force spent the night at Ikuni rather than joining I. Company as intended. Doring had sent two raiding parties with 200 men south in trains, to delay the advancing Allied force. I. Company had heard the train run south at 4 a.m., while halted on the road near Ikuni, a village about 6 miles kilometers south of Agbeluvho. A section was sent to cut off the train and the rest of I. Company pressed into Agbeluvho. A local civilian guided the section to the railway, where Lieutenant Collins and his men piled stones and a heavy iron plate on the tracks, about 200 yards 180 meters north of the bridge at Ikuni and then set an ambush. One of the trains of 20 cars was derailed by the obstacles placed on the tracks and the other train was halted by the rest of I. Company at the Battle of Agbeluvho. In the fight between German troops in the railway carriages and the British, the Germans were defeated, Fowler was killed and a quarter of the German force became casualties. Topic. Battle of Chra, the 22nd of August Despite the skirmish in the northwest at Buffalo and the action at Agbeluvho, Allied forces advancing towards the German base at Kamina had not encountered substantial resistance. The last natural barrier south of Kamina was the Chra River, where Doring chose to make a stand. The railway bridge over the river was destroyed and the approaches to the river and village were mined. On 21 August, British scouts found 460-560 German police troops entrenched on the north bank of the river. The West African rifles, supported by French forces from the east, assembled on the south bank and during the 22nd of August Bryant ordered attacks on the German entrenchments. The British forces were repulsed and suffered 17% casualties. Lieutenant George Thompson became the first British officer to be killed in action in the First World War, although the Germans had repelled the Allied force from an easily supplied, fortified position. French troops were advancing from the north and east towards Kamina unchecked and a British column was advancing on the station from Keat Krachi in the west. On the morning of 23 August, the British found that the German trenches had been abandoned. The Germans had withdrawn to the wireless station and during the night of 24-25 August, explosions were heard from the direction of Kamina. 
French and British forces arrived at Kamina on 26 August, to find that the nine radio towers had been demolished and the electrical equipment destroyed. Doring and 200 remaining troops surrendered the colony to Bryant, the rest of the German force had deserted. The Allied troops recovered three Maxim machine guns, 1,000 rifles and about 320,000 rounds of ammunition. <laughs> Aftermath Analysis Before the wireless station at Kamina was destroyed, 229 messages were passed between Germany, the Navy and colonies following the outbreak of war. The first military operations of British soldiers during the First World War occurred in Togoland and ended soon after British operations began in continental Europe. In December 1916, the colony was split into British and French occupation zones, which cut through administrative divisions and civilian boundaries. Both powers sought a new partition and in 1919, Article 22 of the Treaty of Versailles partitioned former German colonies between the Allies. In July 1922, British Togoland and French Togoland were created from former German Togoland, as League of Nations mandates. The French acquisition consisted of about 60% of the colony, including the coast. The British received the smaller, less populated and less developed portion of Togoland, to the west. The part administered by the British, united with Ghana upon its independence in 1957, French Togoland gained independence in 1960, becoming the modern Togolese Republic. The surrender of Togoland marked the beginning of the end for the German colonial empire, which lost all of its African and Pacific possessions. Topic. Casualties British casualties in the campaign were 83, French casualties were about 54 and German casualties were 41. An unknown number of troops and carriers deserted on both sides. Topic. Notes equals equals footnotes